A light cone. First, let us consider the three possible curvatures of the fabric of the space-time continuum. All of these occur in different places in space, around various sorts of orbs or clouds. However, the one that adds up to occur the most determines the overall shape of the majority of the space-time continuum itself. The saddle form signifies a cyclical Big Bang and Big Crunch alternating explosion and implosion of the entire universe. The sphere geometry signifies a single, fixed aspect ratio for the expansion of space over time, such that at a certain predetermined critical mass point, the universe would simply stop changing over time, and everything would hold still for eternity. The final potential geometry defining space-time shapes it into flat planes, usually in spirals, such as in the accretion of stars into spiral galactic disks and the double helix formation of molecules into biological DNA. This morphology means a timeline of perpetual expansion at a fixed rate. Secondly, we consider the method we use to slice backward in time through all these potential geometric patterns for the fabric of our space-time continuum, that is, creating a 4D cone with a circulating base and a singularity at its apex. The axis of rotation of the base is assumed to be a factor determined by the base's midpoint's relation to the conical apex. We call this axis the observer's line of sight. The circulating base revolves around the midpoint according to a trajectory determined by the angle of an axis connecting the base's midpoint to the conical apex. When we apply the 4D light cone method to measuring the expanding history of the universe, we trace the origin point of our continuum's surface to a central singularity, the Big Bang, and for shorthand depiction, assume the traditional expansion model of a sphere. In this model, the curvature of present space-time causes a lens effect to occur as we look back through time towards the first spark of the Big Bang, similar to a double-slit experiment with no interfering obstacles. Modern cosmology has improved on this method only by modifying the curvature of space-time's effect on the model of the light cone to depict various levels at which the rate of expansion has slowed or sped up. It should also be recalled that, in different locations in space, various different types of curvature can occur as well. For example, in addition to the direct line of sight from an observer looking backward through time toward the Big Bang, we see the formation of wormholes, baby universes, and intergalactic alignments. These same effects can all be incorporated as occurring inside this model of my own design based on a strong gravitational curvature to the continuum's historical light cone caused between the Big Bang and the point of critical mass by the singularity of the Big Bang itself. The resultant curved light cone shows the division of the four elemental forces between the Big Bang and the point of critical mass. The observer's line of sight is shown as the dotted arc. In this model, also of my own design, we see the light cone history of the universe from the Big Bang until critical mass, in black, occurs inside a larger temporal pattern depicted as Aleph sub N in blue at a 45 degree angle and as Aleph sub Sigma in red at a right angle. This pattern forms the interior hole in the Aleph sub Omega hypersphere depicted as a green circle. Surrounding this entire cosmological process is the Tau sub Tau tesseract symbolizing the method of measuring time. 
cosmological model. We begin from the furthest measurement outside of the pattern that comprises the history of our universal timeline, at the level of the Tao sub Tao tesseract, symbolizing the measurement of time over space. As we begin to zoom inwards, we pass the exterior ring of the Aleph sub Omega Taurus and approach the interior pattern of perpetual recreation in the innermost engine of our universal pattern. As we approach closer still, we see our present universe in the circle on the left of the diagram, the Big Bang Singularity event expanded in the central circle, and in the circle on the right is expressed a geometric representation of the Nulliverse on the opposite side of this cyclical pattern from our own present universe. In this excerption, of only the engine of creation pattern from the innermost core of the Tao sub Tao tesseract we see the Big Bang and expanding singularity is given as the Aleph sub Sigma Taurus in red the present universe and its warped light cone are depicted as the Aleph sub zero and Aleph sub infinity timelines on the half of the diagram in green the nulliverse of pure antimatter zero-point energy is shown as the opposite half of the torus in the diagram as the Aleph sub N sub torus in blue. In this expanded depiction of the geometry of the Aleph sub sigma warped torus form, showing the overall shape of the space-time continuum as an expanded pattern over its entire cyclical pattern, we see the warped light cone of our own universe's history on the lower left, the nulliverse of ZPE on the right, and between them the engine of creation, expansion of the Big Bang event that began the expansion of our present universal singularity. Here we see only the heart of the engine of creation pattern, the expansion of the event of the Big Bang, beginning the expansion of our universal continuum from the pre-universal singularity. We see electric force lines shown as a torus in blue, conical magnetic field lines in red, and between them the warped saddle shape of a perpetually recycling continuum's geometry. Following from this, to the left side of the Aleph sub sigma torus diagrams seen previous, we return to the original warped form of a light cone model I proposed, depicting the division of the four elemental forces between the Big Bang and the point when the universe reached critical mass. Finally, expanding on the central circle showing the universe's complexification within a temporally stationary contraction of space, we find this torus, seen from above the midpoint of its central hole, showing baby universes occurring perpendicular to black holes, interconnected by parallel dimensional wormholes in a multiverse of n potential alternative timelines. Multiversal time space defines the outer circle in this diagram and the inner circle depicting the torus shaped central hole represents the space-time speed of our own universal continuum's photon fabric. The Four Forces To examine the division of the four elemental forces of energy in the universe, following the Big Bang, but prior to the point when the universe reached critical mass, and began to devour itself from within like a hungry stomach. We can use graphs such as this one, with only modifications by myself from the original model proposed by Michio Keiku in his book Hyperspace. The evolution of the elements during the first Planck time following the Big Bang is plotted as proceeding from the upper left to the lower right along the diagonal of the square lattice. The first to form is Einsteinian gravity, the so-called gravitational constant of general relativity. The second is Maxwell radiation, 
classed as photic and EM radiation. The third are yang mills type particles comprising the weak nuclear force of fission. The fourth and final to form prior to critical mass were the quark and lepton real particles of solid matter held together through, presumably, nuclear fusion. The question marks along the diagonal axis where the vertical columns and horizontal rows signifying the four elements intersect signify the energy level at which the elementary energy forces recombine and approach total reunification. In this diagram, an extension of the previous diagram to signify five elemental forces prior to the sixth state of critical mass, we find the traditional order of formation of the four forces following the Big Bang constituting the prime or fifth element. First, following the Big Bang, gravity formed, then photic light, then the nuclear force carrying particles, then quarks and leptons, and finally critical mass occurred. Replacing the question marks from the previous diagrams are miniature versions of a transform given by Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose. In this picture, we see my own hand-copied depiction of this Hawking-Penrose transform. This graph shows the way space-time drops off rapidly into a deep warping surrounding the event horizon of a black hole. Here again, we see the form of a Poincare slice of a torus, the same results produced from a four-walled double-slit experiment. By substituting the Hawking-Penrose transform graph showing the event horizon's warping of space-time surrounding a black hole for the previous question-marked diagram, we arrive at this model where the one Hawking-Penrose transform applies to the reunification energy for all four elemental forces. The results are the different warpings to the fabric of space-time shown on the right. In this final form of the preceding diagrams, we see the division of the four elemental forces during the first expansion immediately following the Big Bang. We see the Hawking-Penrose transform as the Poincare section of a torus, symbolizing the temperature of energy excitation at which the four elemental forces reunify. Gravity we see in black, electromagnetism in blue, fusion in green, and fission in red. On the left side of this diagram, we see also applied the mnemonic pattern of expansion rate at which the four elemental forces divided from one another in their initial temperature conditions just after the Big Bang.